For this video, we're going to take a look at the law of large numbers and how it compares to the average. Also, we're going to take a look at skewness near the end of the page. So first, let's handle the law of large numbers. Let's first tackle the definition and then kind of put this into more common terms. The definition is if you take samples of a larger and larger size, the x bar or the average gets closer to mu. And this x bar is the average of the sample and mu would be the average of the total population. Now, a good way to think of this is that you can think of flipping a coin. If you flip a coin three times and you happen to get heads three times in a row, it's possible. It's not as maybe likely as other outcomes of flipping a coin three times, but it's completely possible. But does that mean that your coin only flips heads? It probably is unlikely because it just means that you have not used the law of large numbers. What this means is that you should keep flipping the coin and keep taking data because you found an average of three heads per, you know, three heads out of three or a zero chance of getting a tails. But what will actually happen is you will probably get heads and tails in a more equal, um, equal distribution the more you do it. So according to the law of large numbers, if you flip the coin 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 times, your x bar, which is your average of heads versus tails, will get closer to mu, which is what's expected. Now, that was for a, that was for a uh, situation where we could actually calculate probability, but this also works too when getting x bar, a small sample set of people, to mu, which is the entire population. Let's say instead of asking each person in a state how they would vote, you get a small sample size. And then you ask how they would vote on an election. And that, if done well, would actually represent how the entire state's going to do. But the law of large numbers states that if you actually ask more people, your answer of finding out how they're going to vote is gonna get more accurate. Another way to put this is eventually the odds come true. And especially this statement, the way that I say it, is really talking more about probability in terms of games of chance. And so let's take a look at this casino situation number one. Suppose that a certain slot machine has an average jackpot payout that pays out one every 100,000 times, or spins, or 0.01%, so very unlikely. However, a lucky gambler wins their first time playing. How could the casino use the law of large numbers as a strategy to get their jackpot back from that lucky person? Well, essentially, it just plays off this idea that eventually the odds will come true, which means that the person hasn't played enough for the odds to fully come into fruition. So what they usually do is they have incentives to come back. So they might ask, you know, the person who's won the jackpot for some personal information, as you probably would for tax purposes. But then, you know, make sure that they can, you know, call for a limo service to come back to a gamble a little bit, or have some free food or a hotel suite. Just anything to do to get them to take that jackpot and give it partially back to the casino. So that is how the casino will use the law of large numbers by allowing people to stay in the seats for longer periods of time, those games which, has, which have less, all the games, have less than a 50% chance of winning, eventually the casino will make money off of those games. 
Now, the law of large numbers can be also used by gamblers, and perhaps in, in, danger, in very dangerous ways. Let's take a look at this casino situation. Suppose a gambler is playing roulette. That's a, where a ball spins and can land in either the red section or the black section, and sometimes a very small number of green sections. So, to give you an idea, on the wheel itself, black occurs, let's just assume, 47 times. And red occurs 47 times as well. But also there are some green spaces that occur six times. Now, what happens is that they play, they, they saw and they've been watching this roulette wheel pay off on black six times in a row. They immediately bet everything on red. Now, let's explain how the law of large numbers can justify this dangerous thinking and possible flaws in their argument. Well, one of the dangerous things you can do is you can kind of call out random events. Calling out a random event is incredibly dangerous. Now, if we play roulette long enough, the percent occurrences of black and red will roughly be about the same. And there are going to be enough occurrences of green that will prevent you from betting one color straight for an entire run of turns. So how this works is that the gambler is thinking, I can bet everything on red because as the sample gets larger, which is what's happening here, because when this person is seeing more games played, the sample of viewed events gets larger. As the sample gets larger, what's going to happen is that your small sample average of number of times black, red, and green show up actually get more correct as you watch it more and more and more times. And you're just kind of assuming that, oh my goodness, it's about time red should show up. But the danger is that the marble does not believe what time is showing up. The marble isn't sentient. The marble just lands where it lands. And so trying to guess the randomness is dangerous. Because it is true, as the sample, sample gets larger, the probabilities will come true are you in that moment of time when you've been there long enough and you've done this long enough to actually, you know, hit that time? And that's the dangerous thing about gambling. Gambling is the hope that you come in during that sliver of time when it was correct to do so and then leave for the rest of the time. So a good example of this is sitting at the blackjack table for an infinite amount of time and betting on one color. You would probably pick black or red since they are more common, but if you basically play those colors and for an infinite amount of time, the casino will still win because if you sit on one of just one color, the other two colors will call, come up more often. So that's in essence the law of large numbers and some situations that might occur. To end this video, we are going to talk about skewness. We are looking at three different graphs, and each graph has symmetry, like this graph here. See how symmetrical it is? Perfectly symmetrical, which means that the left and right are balanced, and if you put a pencil right there at the at number seven, it should balance on that tip of the pencil. Now, these graphs are skewed. Here's one graph that's skewed in this direction. Here's another graph that's skewed in this direction. This is called skewed left. Now, most of the time, our x-axis goes from low to high. So another way to think of this is skewed low, which means that there were a few low scores that skewed the distribution to the left. So the balancing point would no longer be at the seven, the balancing point would be between the six and the seven. And this is in a graph called skewed right. And the reason why it's skewed to the right is because we have a couple high scores that's pulling this to the right. 
so the balancing point is no longer at the 7. The balancing point is between 7 and 8. And what's fun about these balancing points here and balancing points here is these balancing points of the physical graph, if you actually made these out of blocks, Legos, or you know some kind of you know a toy where each piece of the graph was equally weighted, these balancing points would be the average. So in the previous, in the first picture, picture A, the average is seven, and the balancing point is seven. For B and C, the averages are no longer seven. For a skewed left graph, it's actually lower than the normal that you know gets skewed low kind of like pulled by the outlier so to speak if i put one low score way over here then that at balancing point would have to move down like so because an average is skewed by the outlier imagine carrying a plate of dishes where most of them were stacked here but one was still stacked way over here and here skewed right Again, the weights to the right, drag it to the right. And that is your video on the law of large numbers and skewness.